Good morning, everybody. Time to get to work. It is time for some Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Renf, and I'm here to usher you in through the week of your first week of February. It is February the 6th, and I'm going to tell you guys about all the things that have been happening this week. I got some city council. I got a little bit of uh, programming for you guys as well, but not in the program that you may think. So stay tuned for that a little bit later. But let's kick things off with a little thing called, um, well, more like a big thing that's called the weather. It is currently 13 degrees outside. It snowed last night. Of course, today you have that 50% chance of snow. It wasn't snowing like five seconds ago when I just checked. So it might snow, it might not snow, but there is winter advisory warnings until 11 a.m. this morning. Um, tonight, you're going to be partly cloudy. Thursday is going to be sunny with a high of 19 degrees. Um, your high for Friday is going to be 25. And then by Friday night, it's going to start getting really cold with a low of 5 degrees. But tonight, you're going to expect the negative degree temperatures going on to the weekend. Um, you know, there's a lot of weather happening, and it's just going to get colder. It is, we're basically in the middle of winter, even though that punks to Tony Phil. Um, the groundhog didn't, uh, wasn't scared of his shower, uh, shadow, sa shower, he wasn't scared of a shower, um, but yeah, if he's scared of his shower, then um, fall won't come. I don't know, that's a whole nother thing. Anyways, spring is supposed to come early, but in Montana, um, we usually don't get the memo until a little bit later on. All right, let's talk about some Ski slopes. If you guys are going to Big Sky Mountain Ski, Big Sky Resort, you, you can see that they had fresh powder in the last 72 hours, 12 inches. And of course, the fresh powder will last seven, uh, 24 hours. And from the clear skies in the next couple days, this will be perfect for uh, getting out on the slopes. It's gonna be really cold though, but it's gonna be perfectly snowy because there's a lot of fresh power, powder, whitefish, black tail mountain ski area had six inches, bridge ball had three inches. Red Lodge had two inches. Montana Snow Bowl didn't have any inches, but they did have four inches the last 72 hours, which uh, it kind of encompasses that Tuesday, uh, that Sunday snowstorm that happened, um, which brings us to our breaking news item. I just want you to tell you guys is that there's some breaking news, and I'm going to tell you about that breaking news right now. Uh, since Monday, after the snowstorm, we discovered, or should we say we didn't discover, uh, the whereabouts of MCAT's recycle can. If anybody have, who have seen this Recycle can. This is an example. This is not the exact recycle can. There's a label MCAT on it, uh, written in white, kind of chalky letters. Um, in the back alley of MCAT building, there were three recycle bins, each marked for each of the um, in-house organizations that are here at the facilities on 500 North Higgins. Ours had our labeled MCAT. In the morning, of Monday, MCAT staff reported that two of the three uh, bins were blown away towards the sidewalk with no signs of MCAT's bin were left in the form of, and the only evidence was the form of the chain that kept these um, recycle bins in place. If you have any information about our recycle bin, you're told to call 542-6228. You can email us MCAT at MCAT.org. All right, now back to some regular news. Um, in local news, for, for um, 47 years, the Missoula Art Museum um, has hosted the Benefit Art Auction, and what they found was more money they could ever imagine at the most recent one last Saturday. $215,000 were raised over the weekend with over 400 people in attendance. Big supporter, uh, Drollinger Family Foundation, which has their own art collection within uh, the Missoula Art Museum, initially s said it would match $50,000 to any money raised during this fundraiser, but during the fundraiser, they raised their donation to $60,000 during the auction. One example um, of some of the art auction was George Gogus contributed the latest Picasso meets Charlie Russell series, a uh, President Donald Trump into an old West scene called Judith Basin Encounter when Charlie and Pablo knew Donald would never be a hand. The piece was valued at $3,000. Bidding started at $1,500 and finished with $7,250. Uh, uh, 48 pieces were sold, and the money that has got, uh, um, the money going towards the museum goes to programs like the Missoula Art Park, staff members, um, and an outreach to schools in the Beirut and the Flathead Indian Reservation and areas in and outside Missoula County. And in accordance with uh, m uh, many uh, Missoula classes for uh, workshops for kids that happens at the Missoula Art Museum. 
So good news for the Missouri Museum. Um, in state news, every January, Montana takes time to count the homeless population. Winter is a time to be indoors, and many shelters are going out to get a head count. The Helena United Way office has spent the last week conducting the annual Department of Housing and Urban Development Point of Time survey. So the point of this is to um, categorize where everybody slept on the night of January 31st. For over 20 years, Point of Time survey allows this survey to go out and reach people to determine which community is hurting for funding and whether or not money can be reallocated to these places in need. Part of the population, um, prob part of the um, population that's in the most critical state is the LB LGBT community who are unwelcome and many places are not safe for them. While having an um, accurate count on people who are couch surfing or staying with others, United Way in Helena is making their efforts to help everybody, um, everyone struggling to have a roof over their heads. So United Way is a good resource for many people who are struggling with homelessness along with many um, places here in Missoula, uh, which just did their uh, project uh, Community Connect last Friday. In national news, President Trump's inaugural committee has received a subpoena from the Justice Department investigators. Um, part of uh, the FBI uh, investigation with Robert Mueller, uh, this has nothing to do with that. There's a couple other investigations that are going on brought through different other departments that are following up with um, looking into funding. And this is the inaugural committee. <coughs> so they did to determine whether or not they received foreign um, f uh, financial um, co contributions, which is considered illegal. So the documents are being requested by the Manhattan U.S. Attorney Office because the inaugural committee raised a record $107 million in donations. So it's kind of like an audit. Um, <coughs> sorry. Ooh, I'm starting to cough now. <coughs> Just let me. Okay. Ahmad uh, Zubiri, um, according to NPR, was the only individual named as part of the request for documents, according to new, the, the New York Times. Zubiri uh, has raised money for President Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and was pr reportedly trying to develop a relationship with Trump, which may have um, encouraged him to raise money for him for his inaugural committee. So they're looking into that, and that's some of the news that are happening. There's always a whole bunch of news happening, um, and those are some of the, the brief flyovers of some of the things happening. Um, MCAT has been um, running a new program on MCAT, so I'm going to give you a highlight, um, a basically a highlight reel of episode five that we just filmed last Saturday. You, um, you guys can watch this pretty much any time, but if you guys um, want to check these out, you can go to MCAT.org. Um, but for right now, here's a little tease of Dude, I Just Drew highlights episode five. Everybody and welcome to Dude I Just Drew, episode five, and um... I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I dropped my coin. This, uh, I have my drink of choice. Yeah, uh, present yourself. Uh, my name is Joshua Dean Cook the first. And it's what, me what again, Bill, and you're, you're a host. My name is Joshathan Dinas Cook, the firstathan. Okay, uh, um... I've been what? <laughs> a dragon on a sailboat trying to find the Loch Ness Monster. Is it by somebody? Holy cow. <laughs> oh, yeah, by Eleanor Service. I don't know what the Loch Ness Monster actually looks like. It's a gobble wonker. That's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> but is it a monster? Look at that fish, he's like... Hey. hey. Oh, that's a Loch Ness. That's a Loch Ness. Right Shoot, what yeah, that's what the Loch Ness dragon? monster looks like. Wait, 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 wait what, what's, the, what's the category? It's the dragon with the The dragon Loch Ness is monster. looking for the Loch Ness monster. And the, the dragon, um... Or maybe they were both looking for each other the whole time. <gasps> oh, that's so much better. <laughs> 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 you live long enough to see yourself come to you. <laughs> you took like my idea of the the <laughs> dragon being oblivious and took it to a whole other level. <laughs> my name's not Rick! <laughs> <laughs> ah, my name's not Ricky! I'm Chameleon! That's my name! You are... Ricky. Artist drawing art. Artception. Art <laughs> it doesn't even say who wrote this. Uh, that's because it's from one of us. It's from one of us. Graham? No. Scott? Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was. Yeah. I wouldn't offend anybody. Uh, Tom? 
If you came here, you would destroy everybody on this show. Like, nobody can stand up to the, to the Nelson. Okay, destroy people to find out. Is this a potential uh, uh, guest? I hope so. Like, <laughs> consider it. Give me the Zuck with Mark Zuckerberg. Well, I don't even know what Mark Zuckerberg looks like. He's a uh, robot. He looks man. like uh, he he's like a Facebook a guy. Human, human robot. He looks like Jesse. Eisenberg. Can I draw Has again? A long neck. <laughs> all right, all right. I think I've got this going now. Got it going? Yeah. He looks like he looks like a little kid who just went to Disneyland. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's going Wait, to Disneyland. Why is his arm so long? Was that Jesse Eisenberg? <laughs> Get out of here, Neil. You got a very storybook style. Thank you. A very storybook drawing style where it's like. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 water is good. Is he naked? No. He's got his little suit on, see his little lines. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Kermit. <laughs> he looks like Kermit. <laughs> Are those nukes going off in the background? <laughs> is he a chameleon? Um, so good having you on the show, Josh. Nice job with the win. <laughs> pretty, there's some pretty awesome art there. Some simplistic stuff, some fun stuff. Wow. That's some fun times. The, I think the, the way to beat Ron is just to be chill. Just be chill. <laughs> just be chill, great. boy. But, you, but if you want to get close to him, you'd be crazy. I'm a chill boy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, check us out at uh, whatever social medias we're all at. Check out our Facebook page. Check out the poll if you want to suggest ideas. I'm, and might, check my out offer, my Instagram. My offer, still, my, our, our, my offer still holds to any other artists that are out there. It's kind of terrifying because he knows where I am right now. That's why. That's why I wrote like I know where you are because like if he does turn into a monster, what's to stop him from just finding out where the you world? are? <laughs> am I right? <laughs>
going into homelessness. So they offered wellness screenings, haircuts, and also uh, aid for people struggling as well. So get in contact with any of those resources, United Way, I believe uh, Project Community Connect is another good resource as well. Um, but anyways, um, here's another uh, public comment of this, and this is uh, Josh Decker. Last night, I offered a meal and a ride to the Salvation Army for a fellow that is sleeping rough. He accepted the meal, but declined the ride because it was 6.30, and he would have had to wait outside the Salvation Army shelter for the remaining three and a half hours until they opened to accommodate the warming that he needed. The 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. schedule that the Salvation Army is accommodating for general warming is a third of a solution. It's not even really that, because as I've talked to a lot of you about recently, our public transportation doesn't operate at those hours to transport people to the Salvation Army at near 10 at night. If you drive around on Russell between 9.30 and 10, you'll see an exodus of people walking towards the shelter that have moved from some small modicum of shelter to what is clearly increased shelter, but doing so in the middle of the night, essentially. Um, I think that as a council, you guys can come together and approve funding or figure out some measure to warm our citizens. Warm. All right, so that was Josh Tecker. Um, there are a couple other comments that referred to this, but um, I just kind of wanted to uh, um, used a couple of those quotes to kind of an example of some of the overview of public comments that are happening at that time. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's talk about public hearing, hearings. And one of the public hearings was Hokieville off of uh, Higgins is being torn down to be to build a new uh, to be uh, to build a new restaurant. And uh, one of the things is that they are asking for a tavern rezoning of the property, which has caused some concerns within the city council about how late they can stay open and how late they can serve alcohol. So uh, starting off with the owner of Hoagieville, uh, one of the three owners is Chris Noble. He clarifies uh, why he wants to rezone and what he intends to use the Hoagieville property for. I'm not proposing to open a tavern. I am proposing to open a tap house with food, with coffee in the morning, breakfast items, plenty of N.A. beverages for the whole family. So again, this is going to be a restaurant with just beer and wine served on location. I am not proposing to open a tavern or bar in any sense of the word tavern. I am proposing to open a restaurant with food, beer and wine, N.A. beverages, coffee, and breakfast items. Again, closing by 10 p.m., completely fine with that. Uh, I've spoke with many people in the neighborhood that are very excited about this opportunity. All right. So, And one of the people who are excited about this opportunity is um, former council member John Wilkins, who lives in the area. This is going to be a plus for the neighborhood. I know everybody's upset that that drive-in's gone. It was an A&W years ago. Uh, it, it's kind of an icon in Missoula, period, and not only the neighborhood, but things must change, I guess. They keep telling me that, and, and slowly I'm starting to believe a little bit of that. So anyway, I, I uh, hope you all approve it. Thank you. Sir. Cool. So that was uh, John Wilkins. He also mentioned that this would be good for the location because he, he has also noticed that there's been some um, – drug deals going on in that particular area between Hoagieville and the gas station, um, certain behaviors of certain folks p crossing through and passing through as well. And he thinks that this new construction will help um, revitalize the area. All right. So um, let's see. Uh, there's not many other places in that particular area in terms of restaurant choices. There's Domino's and Subway. Um, this would be a restaurant where you can go into and sit down and just have a dinner. Um, the motion passed for this particular thing, but there was a divided issue about this area. 
because um, it's not it's the rezoning has everything to do with like giving permission to the pro any future property owner to open up a tap room tavern and what have you so they're trying to figure out a type of phrasing that would talk about the property in detail and the potential risk involved with rezoning and we're kicking this into gear with Stacy Anderson zoning change um, that's a permanent it has nothing to do with this particular business now I know the intent of this particular owner is to be done serving food and drink at 10 o'clock and that's great but if at some point in time in the future he were to decide to sell this property the tavern zoning change would go along with that property and the new owner depending upon whatever liquor license they have which we do not have any say over could then keep it open until 2 o'clock with a whole a very different feel to this building. So what I was trying to achieve was to honor what the applicant was trying to do as well as keep the character of the neighborhood because this is a permanent zoning request. And not to start a whole Pandora's box on times and patrons, basically if we could just change, and I don't know if this is a friendly amendment, to say that food and service ends at 11. Um, I know it's the applicant's intent to say 10, but you know, some summer nights, it you know, there might be some sort of special event, and we don't want to limit his ability as a business owner, but um, but also honoring the neighbors. So I think 11 seems to be a reasonable um, middle ground, and not necessarily have anything about patrons leaving. Especially, I mean, there will just be a natural progression of people leaving when food and drink has stopped being served. And all I right, so that was Stacy Anderson. Um, a couple of the city council members were not in agreement with this, and Jordan Hess um, is um, not really in agreement with the having like an 11 p.m. cutoff, particularly because some of the uh, past uh, tavern rezoning requests haven't yielded um, two good results, particularly on the matter of figuring out um, how the city rezones. I don't necessarily have a strong opinion. Um, it seems uh, my recollection from the, the draft works discussion was that um, the owners were um, not intending to stay open late on a regular basis, but um, but they were desiring, you know, sometimes summer nights when it's um, when it's light out really late, or um, maybe something like New Year's or a special occasion. Um, they didn't want that um, tied to the um, to the um, zoning approval um, just for what it's worth now this applicant appears to have a, a you know be much more um, open to the conditions so um, again I don't have a strong preference either way um, but I'm not just in principle I'm not sure that this is the right place to do that all right so that was Jordan Hess on that matter um, most of the concerns had to do with how late they would allow this place to be open. Some members think that they cannot play favorites, and this is not a consistent policy that has been put into place with other tavern rezoning areas. Stacey Anderson thinks that by putting this at 11 p.m. closing time would help in the long run, and this is what she had to say in reaction. ...could be in the future... A with another applicant, if there was a sale of the property, they could come forward and ask for that removal. I think that to, um, but zoning requests are permanent, and if we don't put this condition, and at some point in the future, the ownership changes and it becomes a loud bar that's open till two o'clock um, every night we are going to have a long line of neighbors here rightfully complaining saying hey when you guys made this change in 2018 we did not intend for this to be what our neighborhood looks like so I think that we need to think about the long-term consequences of these zoning requests because they are to the land, not the applicant. And I would encourage all of my council members to support this amendment as well as it was laid out by some of the folks who spoke about it in support. Um, all right. So Stacy Anderson um, uh, amended a motion to make sure that any businesses um, stop serving um, alcohol and food at 11 p.m. cutoff time. And it was a really close, but it, the motion did pass. And, of course, on a side note, if people wanted alcohol in that particular vicinity, they could just go to the gas station, which is pretty much open 24-7. Um, that's just, you know, so it's not really different in terms of just, like, alcohol sales, but just, like, it's, you know, it's not a bar where people hang out and drink, but people can still get alcohol um, at the gas station. So that doesn't really... 
change any kind of um, problem that's going to happen. All right, so Brian Von Losberg is talking about a certain trip to Palmerston, North New Zealand. Um, this is a thing that's been kind of um, happening within the city of Missoula. Arts Missoula um, hosted New Zealand, and uh, the city council along the way kind of gave a tour to a bunch of exchange people from our sister city in New Zealand. They came down here in October, and, and now Brian Velosberg is talking about a certain trip to Palmerston, North um, New Zealand, with, with adding two city council members. So this is what he had to say in, in terms of the New Zealand exchange. Um, I think, as everyone knows, uh, Arts Missoula, um, uh, Tom and Udo have been taking the lead on putting this exchange together. Uh, from the Missoula side, we received a delegation um, of folks from Palmerston North uh, here in 2018. Um, I'll try to succinct. So from a logistics standpoint, as is mentioned in the referral, uh, this is within council budget that I manage with um, uh, Kirsten Hands and um, no change to that budget. We are, um, I've worked with the uh, proposed delegates uh, and we're sharing the expenses on this essentially as is detailed in the referral. Um, uh, we're proposing to cover travel uh, per travel airfare per the council budget. Um, the sister city, Palmerston North, is covering all of the registration fees for the conference. Locally, lodging is going to be achieved primarily through homestays, no cost homestays. Uh, and then, um, as we did with the delegation here, uh, we covered most of their sort of day to day um, per diem. Uh, and, and the expectation is the same for the folks here. Um, I All right, so that was um, Brian Von Oshberg talking a little bit about that. I have one more quote, and it is from Jesse Ramos, who, on the other hand, doesn't like the fact that the city is spending money on an um, all, all, an all expense paid trip to New Zealand. I can understand us going to the the Missoula Le or the Montana League of Cities and Towns conference in Butte uh, to meet with other elected officials from across the state and, and learn about stuff that's more specific to um, our state laws, to our local laws, um, and various other things like that. And learn from communities of similar size and scope to us and, and how they do stuff within the parameters of uh, not only the U.S. law but Montana state law. And I, I think that that is a valuable conference. Um, but this, I, I, I think that it looks bad um, going halfway around the world and further um, on tax dollars, again, which was raised through very aggressive uh, funds. And then on top of that, we're, we're sending a couple of folks from Arts Missoula to go um, as well, which I don't understand why if we have two council members that are going, I think that they can provide that same um, value uh, in that sense, and they can report back to us just as equally as uh, the folks from Arts Missoula can, um, and they, they actually do represent the city uh, specifically. So just because of those combinations, I, I'm going to vote no on this. All right, so a couple um, a couple weeks ago, the city approved a $5,000 um, um, trip to New Zealand for Tom Benson and Arts Missoula. They were going to raise rest to help um, try to garnish and uh, get representations from the Salish Kootenai tribe and just kind of see how uh, Palmerston North New Zealand's city government integrates uh, uh, the native culture and in their indigenous culture in their um, country within their community and see how uh, we can f uh, in Missoula can start bringing in more um, harmony between us and the tribes. Um, of course, the motion passed among the two city council members, Heather Harp and Jordan Hess, will be making this trip to Palmerston North, New Zealand. Um, Tom Benson, of course, from Art Missoula, along with whoever they can get from the state of the Shkutni tribe, um, if, once they raise the money for it. Uh, the city plans to come back with a presentation about the trip, just like they they did back in November about the um, October visit from New Zealand, um, from the delegates from New Zealand last October. Um, and of course, this was an overview of the uh, Monday's city council meeting. You can watch those meetings and more by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.com. US, you go to your government, you go to agendas, webcast minutes, you can go to the search bar, you can l literally look up city council, and you can find all those resources online as well. You can go to agendas, webcast minutes, it brings you to this page right here, and you can see all the lists and all the agendas of upcoming meetings and more. All right, guys, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a break from this. I'm going to throw to an art clip, and this is going to be pretty much ending by tomorrow, and... It's from the Clay Studio of Missoula. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events.
Hey guys, welcome back. A little uh, uh, correction there. It's from the Gallery of the Visual Arts, which will be ending it tomorrow, which pretty much they will might be taking some things down today. So Gallery of Visual Arts is out of the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. Um, usually they uh, help encourage students, their art students, to put on shows there as well, BFAs, all that wonderful things that the university provides in terms of art. Um, <laughs> let's go over some things that are happening within uh, the city of Missoula. It's time for Missoula events. Um, hey, it's cold outside. You want your kids to be out and active. Mismo, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Acro Sports Center, they have all the things that you need. Indoors, gymnastics, foam pits, uh, padded walls, padded floors, just a whole bunch of things like that. It's just a good thing to be indoors and do all that stuff. Um, a lot of indoor fun for a lot of families, especially during this cold weather. Um, Empower Place Tiny Tales is a good place to get in um, out of the cold. Um, of course, I, I'm not going to say that for every event, but uh, this is going to be the Missoula Food Bank and Missoula Public Library in conjunction with the Missoula Food Bank. Do an Empower Place Tiny Tales starting at 1030 where that gets kids engaged in reading. And they also have a breastfeeding group for uh, people. Um, women mostly um, at 11 a.m. starting at 11 a.m. at the Missoula uh, Food Bank as well. Hands-on science kicking things off with some brains dissections at Spectrum Discovery Center out there 812 2 Avenue address. It's open for visitor visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits. Learn about the anatomy inside your head as they dissect a cow brain at the Discovery Bench. And they uh, they have a deal. Uh, University of Montana Spectrum Discovery Center has a deal with a group that um, basically saves a lot of the good good gooey anatomy brains uh, from a lot of the uh, slaughterhouse farms for people to use to study through science. And just so you guys know, brains aren't pink. They're fleshy and weird and I don't know, it kind of looks like tofu. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that's a little too much information. Scrabble and Bridge. You got to get that Scrabble and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center every um, Wednesday, 1230-ish. Um, now you know, Theology in the Modern World. University of Montana is hosting Theology in the Modern World. It is a series that talks about the biggest questions that are facing religion these days. A description, explanation of each topic will give, be given by host of events, Father Cody Williams. Oh, I know him. I went to college with him. That's awesome. After the talk, he will be uh, then take questions from the audience. And this is at 2 p.m. at the University of Montana. It's called Now You Know Theology in the Modern World. Girls Rock Camp, hey, this is really fun. Girls Rock Camp is something that's been a real big staple with the Zootown Arts Community Center. And this camp, girls will build self-esteem and build a rock band. And this is a camp that will be um, premiering the band on March 15th. And it starts tonight at 4 p.m. And it costs $225 for members and $235 for non-members. A lot of money, but you get a four. You get your kid gets to form a band, and if a kid wants to play music, and you're just like, let's see, and then you're in a group with encouragement, and you get to form a former band. It's great. A lot of times, one of the things is try to hard hard to find a group of like-minded individuals who want to start a band, because it's it's nice enough to have your friends be like, yo, dude, we should totally start a band. It's like, yeah, and then you have no musical talent. It's like, where do you start from? This is a good way to start from. <laughs> Okay. Predator feeding at the Missouri Sectarium. They'll be feeding a cricket to one of the predators at 4 p.m. every Wednesday. Join us today and see who is hungry today. Um, Homeward's final f financial fitness class is happening tonight and tomorrow night. And this, I, I, actually, this is 5th, 6th, and 7th. And this is their uh, financial fitness class. And it goes from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, Tuesday through f Thursday. I want to mention this. Uh, but you can't go to it. Or you can sign up for future things by going on to the Home Word website, which is H O M E W O R D, not like I'm homeward bound. No, this is Home Word. Word up. Yeah, I, I'm that cringy. Um, you can do that, and it's a good way to basically be financial. Um, fresh and you also get a chance to talk with some of the people be like um i spend this amount of money am i doing financial right and then they'll tell you whether you're doing your finances right it's it's fun it's great um and they do it a lot so you guys can check it out and you also get a certificate or you're able to have a grant as high as five thousand dollars in purchasing your home i say this because i got that going towards purchasing my home 
All right, Stained Glass Studio, Lifelong Learning Center. The purpose of this class is to provide a workshop and instruction for beginning, intermediate, and advanced students. It's Stained Glass at 6 p.m., Lifelong Learning Center. It's $87, and this is eight sessions um, starting tonight at 6 p.m., and it goes to 9 p.m., and it's a weekly thing happening every Wednesday until March 27th. Wassel Rags Coats and Capes Costume Class, Zootown Arts Community Center, um, is uh, make your own rag coat or cape for wassail. Taken from the traditional costuming of wassail Morris dancers, the Zach will have rag strips of all kinds available to tie and connect together your colorful capes, cloaks, and attach to old jackets. You can bring old jackets that you want to sew these capes to and make sure the Jacket fits you, that's what they say. Guidance and materials will be available. Um, Missoula Public Library is hosting a um, lively like, intellectual uh, debate um, happening at Missoula Public Library. It's called Socrates Cafe, or Socrates, um, if you're from the 90s. Um, no previous philosophy training required. Just bring your mind and your nagging doubts and, ideal, uh, and idle thoughts. I, I always like to um, mention this because it's always fun just to have a discussion about um, what you do and what is right and what is not right. All right, 3D printing. They also do uh, 3D printing. This is a workshop that's an hour long and it goes from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. and you get an introduction into the 3D printer at the Missoula Public Library. All right, so that's pretty much it for all your Wednesday. If you guys are interested in going doing some trivia tonight, they got a Broadway Bar and Grill has some trivia, the Press Box. Um, they have the Silver Slipper. Um, those are some of the trivia nights where they offer prizes to the top team winners. Um, they also have karaoke at the Badlander. Um, I think the DVFW and the Eagles Lodge all pretty much starting at 9 p.m. tonight. All right, I'm going to have another art clip for you guys only because I only have so much more uh, art clips to show you guys. And this one is an art clip from the Missoula Art Museum. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about your Thursday events. Hey guys, welcome back. I just want to remind you guys that Thursday, when Thursday happens, it kicks off with your YMCA family fun time. Uh, for $22, you and your whole family can go to the YMCA, enjoy their um, facilities with a pool, uh, basketball court, climbing wall, games, um, lounge areas, um, workout machines, and all that stuff happening at the YMCA. It's part of the family fun time, Tuesdays, Thursdays. Um, from 9 to 11.30, Fridays from 3.30 to 5. Homeschool Open Gym at Roots Acre Sports Center. You can come in for a fun hour of light structured gym time, work on some old skills or pick up some new ones. Um, this is for kids age 6 to 12 years of age, and this is happening at 11 a.m. at Roots Acre Sports Center Thursday. Easy step to e-books. Uh, Missoula Public Library is a forefront in the future of books, and they're looking to help people um, in this class of an introduction to an overview of ebooks resources available at the library. Uh, make it and take it crafts at the Big Sky Branch starting at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. Every Thursday, they have a make it and take it crafts. You can make brown sugar lip scrub at the Big Sky Branch. Registration is not required. Um, you call them at 728-2400, which is the MCPS um, mega number. 
728-2400. Their extension is 8605. Again, that extension number is 8605. Invisible butterflies, what are those? Well, you can find out more information about that by going to Missoula Insectarium, um, 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Men's basketball versus Idaho. University of Montana boys basketball team take on Idaho. Not Idaho State, but Idaho. Um, homegrown open mic comedy happening Thursday night. Um, this is happening um, 9.30. Uh, sign up start at 9, but they start at 9.30 p.m. at the Union Club. Um, it's every first Thursday of every month. You can try out their grill. They have food there. Um, yeah. And those are some of the things that are happening for your Thursdays. All right, guys, I do have uh, dubbing stuff for you guys. I totally forgot to show you it right after your city council. So here is dubbing stuff. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about um, some MCAT news and talk a little bit about our orientation tonight. Yo ho ho in a bottle of. Oh, rum. just stop singing. What do you mean? I'm the captain. No, Reggie, you're not. I have the steering wheel, so therefore I'm the captain. You can't. Oh, you, come on. You can't tell me not to sing. Oh. I, I'm the I'm the captain. Anyone can wear a hat and a peacock. So I'm just gonna keep on singing, ho ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Hey, what do you get with oh, a? Oh, just please. Uh, uh, a, a not sober sailor. What do you get with a non? Well, at least sing it right. It's drunken sailor. J j it's just drunken sailor. Yeah, he's you, right. You just can't say ho ho ho, not sober sailor. It's. All right, all right, all right. Oh, everybody's on the sea. Everybody's on the sea with me. Everyone's gonna have a good time. I'm not having sailing. Reggie, you having a good time? Well, on behalf of everybody on the ship, I gotta say that you better just stop singing. And maybe if I was the captain, everything would be so much better. So much better. Better, 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 better. And that's when I decided to go to the Fountain of Youth and become this child. I know I was there. Well, it kind of sucks. I mean, you can't swear. Well, sure you can. But, you know, the adults don't bother you unless you do something wrong. And to think they would call this Birds of Paradise, but it's just called Bird of Paradise. Yeah, it doesn't really flow, but it's a movie from 1932 that I redubbed for your pleasure. All right, so let's talk about some things that are happening here at MCAT besides our missing recycle bin. Um, of course, we did call uh, them and they gave us a replacement, but hey, our recycle bin might be just blowing around somewhere in the downtown Missoula area. So if you discover it, turn it in to MCAT. You can call us at 542-6228. All right, let's talk about some MCAT stuff. Uh, happening Thursday and Saturday this week, MCAT is hosting um, sports uh, live on our Facebook page. You can go to MCAT.org and you can click on the link that brings you to some of our representations of some of our past sports. And if you like us on our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource, you can get notified whenever we go live. Uh, we've been, uh, and also we, um, you probably get been notified a couple times this last couple two weeks because we've been kind of going live um, in and out of different um, times trying to test some of our live streaming capabilities. Um, we're going to be trying to, um, we're going to be live streaming um, school boards um, now on, on Facebook and also try to live stream them on um, through our local live at MCAT.org. So there's that and more, but you can always check it out by um, watching it on Charter Communications Channel 190 every first third and third Tuesday of of the month. You get a little to learn about school board. One of the big things in news in the school board right now is they're looking for a new superintendent and trying to streamline the search to replace Mark Thane, who is retiring. All right, so um, orientation, like I said, happens every Wednesday at 5.30. Come in to MCAT. You can do shows like this and more for anybody who has an enthusiastic um, um, ability or, well, man, what am I talking about? Okay, I'm trying to line up words that try to make sense. So um, orientation happening 530. It is a great way to get a, a step up in broadcast television. Learn more about it. Learn about live streaming, YouTube, um, streaming, just a lot of different things um, that we provide. We, we kind of figure out things over the years. Um, we're, we're modern. Um, we do a lot of automated type stuff here as well. So you can learn all about that and more by logging on to MCAT.org or going uh, a visit, uh, calling us at 542-6228 to inquire more about us. We do uh, camera checkouts. We have consumer to prosumer grade camera equipment for anybody who wants to uh, check equipment out. Our audio equipment is 
very lacking, but we do have some audio equipment that we might be able to uh, help anybody in the future if they were look interested in um, recording um, audio. So just look into that. All right, so what else do I need to mention? Um, if you like my show, uh, be sure to like me on my uh, Facebook page, my Twitter page. All you got to do is look me up at Wake Up Missoula. Um, dot wixsite dot com slash wake up missoula. You can find me. You can literally just Google me, wake up missoula, and you can find everything you need to know from YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. All right, guys, I'm done, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful um, week. Here it is, hump day. I'll see you guys on uh, February eighth. So for wake up missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Stay classy. Mm -hmm.